Welcome. This is the third video for Chapter 6 on uh, kinetics and thermochemistry. And in this section, we're going to be looking more specifically at kinetic energy and collision theory. So kinetic molecular theory, which really is collision theory, evolved from trying to explain why gases exert pressure. So kinetic molecular theory says that particles in a substance move randomly because of the kinetic energy they possess. And not all particles in the substance have the same energy at every moment. But it's going to be close, and especially close if they're the same kind of particle. But remember, kinetic energy is the product of the mass and the velocity squared. So heavier particles move a little slower, lighter particles move a little faster, but the energy should be very close to the same for every particle in the substance. That's going to be proportional to the temperature in Kelvin. In fact, it's going to be directly proportional. In fact, temperature is an indication or a measurement of kinetic energy. If you increase temperature, then you're increasing the average energy of the particles. And in fact, it's the change in kinetic energy that allows or creates the three states of matter. When they have the least amount of kinetic energy, intermolecular forces take over and solids form. When it's got slightly more energy and these intermolecular forces can be stretched, then we get the liquid where there's some motion detectable. And then finally, where you have complete freedom is in the gas state. So a graph that's used commonly to talk about collision theory and why some reactions are successful or have a faster rate is this Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. And what it's showing is the distribution of molecules compared to energy. So if you look at my graph down below, number of molecules is always on the y-axis and it's energy on and kinetic energy on the x-axis. So it shows the range of values of kinetic energy that particles in a gas will have. And again, because all particles have this average kinetic energy, most of them fall under this peak. But there's a few that have a little less energy. And then the graph kind of straggles out a little more to the right, a few molecules that have higher energy at the moment. And there's a variety of reasons why at any given moment, one molecule might have more energy than another at the same temperature in the same conditions. But the Maxwell-Boltzmann graph shows the probability of where molecules are at any given moment. So it shows the probability of how many molecules have a certain amount of energy, and this is especially helpful because we're interested in how many molecules at any point have the minimum energy for a successful collision or have the activation energy. And you can see where that's marked on this graph. So when reactants are placed together, collisions occur between the different kinds of particles, but many of these collisions do not create product. In fact, a very small number of collisions typically create product. So figuring out a way to make the collisions more successful is how you make a reaction happen faster or increase the rate. So in order for the collision to be enough to cause bonds to break and new bonds to form, there's a couple of things that have to happen. They have to have this minimum amount of energy, and they have to have the correct orientation. So down below, I'm showing you two particles hitting each other. This would be a single replacement reaction where A hits BC, and if it's successful, then AB forms and C breaks off. And if we showed that with a more traditional enthalpy graph, we would see that activation is put in, activation energy is added to the reactants. In this case, the products need less energy to make the new bonds, and it's an exothermic reaction. So again, rate will obviously depend on the total number of collisions, but it goes much deeper than that. Many of these collisions won't be successful because they not only need the minimum amount of energy, but there's also a second factor, the orientation or the geometry of the collision. Looking a little more at the energy of the collision, why does it, is there a minimum amount of energy? Well, every reaction needs to overcome the repulsion between the molecules, and it needs energy to break the bonds in the reactants quite often. So that minimum amount of energy is what we call activation energy, or E sub A, and it allows the reactants to reach what we call the transition state. And in my graph down below here, the transition state is right here. We haven't typically labeled that before. We know you start with reactants and you get the products and then the magic kind of happens up at the top there, but that's the transition state where reactants are colliding into each other and 
seeing if they hit in the right spot and with enough energy to actually go over the edge and become product. And this is true whether it's endothermic or exothermic. There's always an activation energy. And so again, once it hits the transi transition state, it may form um, a product or it may revert to being reactant. And again, this also depends on geometry. Activation energy varies greatly among reactions, but the general principle is a higher activation energy is going to be in a slower rate. So for common reactions with a high energy, scientists or chemists are often looking for catalysts that will speed up that reaction. The Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve, as I mentioned earlier, is often used to show how many atoms or molecules likely have that activation energy. And a couple more things to note on the graph that I didn't mention earlier. You notice there are no particles at zero energy. There's a few particles with fairly low energy, but none at zero energy. And also, there's no maximum energy value. The end of this graph is open-ended. But most particles are at the average, and very few are at the level of activation energy. So one way to speed up reaction rate is to either give more energy to more molecules, or you could also change the activation energy. Another possibility is to increase the number of them that have the right geometry. So what is the geometry of the collisions? Well, collisions between particles are random, but they have to occur in the correct orientation. Over time, they occur, you know, they bump into each other in a large number of places, but for most reactions, they have to hit in the right place to break the bond so the new bond can form. So my graphic down below is, tries to show this. You have the larger blue molecule, the smaller pink molecules. They approach each other, and when the little pink, the end of one pink hits the end of the blue, that's not an effective collision. But when they hit head on, and each, of, each pink and each blue atom hits the other, now it's an effective collision. So when you look at what the effective collision is, and you think of all the different possible ways these could collide that don't look like that, you can see why geometry also becomes a big deal along with energy. So factors affecting reaction rate. It's the number of collisions, it's the energy of the collisions, and it's the orientation of the collisions. So if you can find a way to increase any of these, then you can increase your reaction rate. So the five factors that are commonly used to increase or decrease the rate of reaction are the temperature of the reaction vessel, the concentration of the reactants, the particle size of the reactants, the pressure on the reaction vessel, and then a catalyst or inhibitor. And we'll look at these in the next video.